Hi guys, so a little while ago we disclosed our plans on making a beautiful mink sanctuary and um, talked a little bit about the property that we purchased. So now we've officially closed on the property, we're most of the way moved in, um, but we still have a little bit of kind of organizing and moving left, but we're pretty close to moved in. So I wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys the beautiful property that we purchased and talk to you a little bit about our plans with it. The um, reason we did this today is in just a couple days we're going to have a big snowstorm and everything will be covered in snow. So we better get this done or I won't be able to show you anything. As you see, you've got lots of space. So I wanted to tell you guys our plans, what we're going to do with this space. Here we have the dog run. This is temporary. We're just utilizing this while we're, uh, um, until we get things built and fixed up. So we got these slabs of granite. They're basically, uh, it's just scrap granite from when they're making countertops or sinks or whatever. And these chunks are just wasted. And so I've, my brother-in-law works for a granite countertop company and um, we're getting loads of this stuff. And you see, we've got piles of it behind here. So what we're gonna do with this granite is we're gonna make this, this fence mink proof. It's already way taller than a mink could jump and it's slick, so a mink can't climb the fence. So from this end, you know, you're totally solid. Plus there's nothing for them to really get a hold of to chew. And mink aren't honestly the biggest of gnars. So the chance of them chewing on the fence is very, very, very minimal, especially with it being solid structure. They're not tempted to really chew on it. A lot of the mink farms use plastic dividers between the cages. The mink will live there for years and years and years in a tiny little area and never chew through the plastic. So I feel very confident that this is not gonna be a problem with the mink getting through the fence or over the fence. However, under the fence is very likely, not just likely, it's going to happen eventually. Mink are not huge diggers. They're not big burrowers like even their cousins, the ferrets, which really aren't big burrowers, burrowers either. They dig a lot more than a mink does. So with that being said, despite the fact that mink are not big burrowers, they do dig a little bit when they're encouraged to do so and escaping is a big encouragement. So to keep the mink from just simply digging under the fence and escaping, we're gonna use these cement slabs. I thought about using various different materials. Um, wire is just gonna rust eventually. It might be 10 years, might be 20 years. Eventually, even, even specially coated wire is eventually gonna rust when it's being buried down in the, the dirt. So we're gonna use this cement, this, uh, these granite slabs because they will not break down. Uh, this will be here longer than I'm on the earth. So what we'll do is we'll take these slabs and if we just left them like this, we have two problems. Number one problem, it's freaking ugly. <laughs> this is a beautiful property. It would be a shame to just destroy it and make it look like crap by leaving granite slabs everywhere. The bigger problem um, is that mink aren't stupid. So even if it did look nice, let's say we paved it with cement instead of using granite, well, the mink's gonna come along, they're like, oh, can't dig here, obviously. Where can I dig? Oh, there we go. And the mink will just dig down and go under the whole thing and, and escape that way. So what we'll do to foil them is we'll just basically, we'll, we'll take the sod and we'll peel it back. Then we'll lay this down underneath where the sod used to be, slide it under the fence, and we'll put the sod back over it. And we'll obviously cut a thick enough layer that um, that the grass will be able to continue to grow. It'll have be able to get root and all that. And we'll put it back over, and that will keep the mink from knowing where the barrier begins and where it ends. So they might they'll come along here, and it'll look just like this, you know. Oh, look, it's nice and grassy, and the mink will come to the edge and start digging. But after he digs down for a little bit, he'll get down to this solid layer. Boom, and he's like, oh crap. And he might dig out a little bit, or he might come back and dig another little hole. He won't do very much before he realizes, you know what, I don't know how far this cement goes or this granite goes, and they'll just quit trying. Like I said, maybe if we had a big burrowing animal like a, a ground squirrel or a badger, yeah, sure, they're gonna figure it out and they'll dig out. But mink barely will even dig under that fence. So with this type of barrier, I feel very confident that with it being secure so they don't know where it ends and where it begins, they won't dig much, very far before they just give up. So that's the plan with this. We want to make this whole yard totally mink proof so that we could turn a mink loose and they can't escape. They can't climb, they can't dig. They're totally secure. So these are our little sheds. We actually have uh, two little garages 
and a shed and we'll be utilizing those for various different things this this garage is insulated and has power so we're going to be using this for the fridges and the freezers and the meat preparation for making mink food and then in here we're just going to use this for storage and uh, the garage as well we'll just use this or the shed excuse me as well just for more storage so the previous owners, they uh, set up this beautiful little basketball court and I have absolutely no use for a basketball court. I don't play basketball. So uh, we're going to be utilizing this for our mink enclosures. What we're going to do is we're going to continue the cement. So if you see over here, there's a playground. We're going to be moving that down closer to the house and then we're going to continue the cement pad all the way to the fence. And um, you see it's just row after row of cage so we're gonna make a similar design, except for much, much larger. So same idea, huge scale. So we're planning on making it roughly six foot tall, roughly five feet wide, and 30 feet long for each individual compartment. And that will start from here and go all the way to the end, side by side. This five foot by 30 foot long. And then we'll leave a little bit of cement so on this side, we're going to leave a few feet, you know, roughly five feet for us to be able to walk on. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our own little path to go down. And we're going to, over the tops of the enclosures, we're going to make a shelter that will go over this path that we walk on and then cover somewhere between half to a third of the pen. That way the mink have some shelter from the rain or the sun or the or whatever you know the snow but they can also get out in the snow in the rain in the sun they're not always sheltered from it so half the cage roughly they can get out into the sun or play in the snow and the other half of the cage they're protected from the elements so our plans with this area is we're going to turn this into a pond so not the entire area but a chunk somewhere in this in the middle there'll be a section that we're going to turn this into a pond and then we'll have the rocks on the outside That'll help keep the mink from dirtying the water. Mink love to, uh, mink love to, you know, get out after swimming and rub and then jump back in the water and then come out and rub and jump back in the water. If we have grass growing around it, the water will get full of grass. If there's dirt, it'll, it'll get full of mud. So this will help having the rocks will help keep the pool cleaner longer. And in the front yard, we plan on having a, a couple more ponds in place. And in those locations, we're going to breed fish. So we'll have this beautiful pond here. And what we'll do is um, there'll be a pond in the front where the fish are breeding. And we'll harvest some fish from that pond and stock them here into this pond. And what we'll do is we'll release a certain mink or group of mink out for that day or night. So, so I'll come out and feed in the morning, for example, and I'll, I'll, I'll come over here and feed the mink. So pretend this is a mink pen, I'll come, I'll open this pen, and the mink that we're living in here will get to come out, and for that entire day, for a 12 hour period, they'll get the full roam of the yard. They'll be able to run around, they'll be able to swim in, in this pond, and catch their, di their dinner for that, that day, that breakfast, and we'll have already weighed the fish out and planted the exact number of fish or weight of fish that they can eat for the day. So that's their meal. They'll swim around, they'll catch their meal and they'll have access to their pen still so they can go back to their own nest boxes and sleep. And they'll have that for 12 hours. And then that evening when I come back to feed, I'll call these mink into their pen and feed them and shut the door and I'll open up the next pen and they'll be able to be free for the next 12 hours while we're sleeping at night. And then when the next morning comes, I come to feed, I'll lock them up in their pen and such and so forth. So they'll each get a rotation of being able to be free in the yard for a full 12 hours and be able to take advantage of the pond, swimming and catching fish and running around and doing whatever they want to do for a full 12 hours. That way they can get out and get more exercise and enrichment and such. So anyway, that's my basic plan for all of this. There's obviously going to be some changes along the way. For, you know, what I'm thinking right now might not work at all, or we might need to tweak it just a little bit. So there'll be some changes, but that's the basic layout of what I plan on accomplishing here at this new property. Really excited to get started on this project and get it going. We're going to show you our progress as we go along and uh, show you, you know, as we're building things, how they're progressing, what changes we've made in the designs and such. 
and um, yeah we're really excited to get started um, there's a snowstorm coming just in a couple days this should be all covered in white so we're not going to get started on the construction for another month or two kind of let the the bad weather pass and then we'll get started and um, like i said we'll show you the progress as we go and um, i'm super super excited thanks for watching now if you're really wanting to dive into mink and learn the nitty-gritty details i would strongly recommend you read my book the new sport of minkinry if you would like to support us, you can buy a shirt or hat, or consider becoming one of my faithful patrons. Just go to the links in the description below.